Hello, I'm Koki Shida from Kyushu University. In this talk, I will present Super MPU, an extremely fast neural network processing unit using superconducting logic devices. Here is the outline of my talk. First, I will talk the motivation and the research goal of this work. Next, I will explain our modeling and simulator framework with the validation. Third, I will propose the Super MPU the optimized MPU architecture for superconductor single flux quantum logic. Then I will evaluate super MPU and finally I will conclude my talk. Emerging device technologies are recognized as a highly promising solution for the postmodern era. Superconductor single flux quantum logic, SFQ logic for short, is one of the emerging devices and representative ultra-fast and low-power digital circuit technology using superconductor. That figure shows a superconductor ring, which is the circuit element of the SFQ circuit. When we make such a ring of superconductor, the magnetic flux in the ring is quantized by phi zero. The basic idea of SFQ circuit is that we represent binary information based on the absence or presence of SFQ in the ring. In the SFQ circuit, we use Josephson junction to control the SFQ in the ring. Josephson junction are switching element that behave the gate of SFQ. The right figure show a circuit diagram of the ring. A Josephson junction generates an impulse shape voltage bus when the Josephson junction switches. This impulse shape voltage bus leads to the special feature of SFQ circuit. First, SFQ circuits are the logic circuit based on the voltage pulse signals. There is no research process of load capacitance and circuit can operate over 100 GHz. Second, the energy consumption in SFQ circuit is caused only during the switching event. The typical energy consumption is around 0.1 attojoule per switching. Because of these features, several circuits have been demonstrated. These are the example of the successfully demonstrated SFQ circuits. The circuit have applied a gate-level pipelining, which is the most fine-grained pipeline structure. Because all SFQ logic gates have a latching functionality, SFQ circuits can apply such a deep pipeline structure without the additional pipeline register overhead. Thanks to the gate-level pipelining, these circuits achieve around 50 GHz operations. This demonstration successfully showed the high SFQ potential in circuit level. And it is a straightforward next step to evaluate the potential in architecture level. As a first case study, we chose Neural Network Processing Unit, MPU for short, due to following reasons. First, in such an ultra-deep pipelining, the pipeline stock can incur a significant performance degradation. In other words, SFQ circuits are more suitable for the simple data flow applications without any complex control logic, and neural network is one of the applications. Second, the neural network consists of large multiple and accumulate operations, and there are already exist the key components of NPU, such as ALU and multiplier. Therefore, we target NPU as a first case study. However, there are a challenge for the designing SFQ MPU. First, there is no existing SFQ MPU design. Second, there is no architecture model for the SFQ MPU. And finally, we also don't know how to optimize the SFQ MPU. To resolve these challenges, we set three research goals. First, we designed the baseline architecture of SFQ NPU by circuit level analysis to identify the SFQ friendly implementations. Next, we built SFQ NPU model and simulation framework. Finally, we aim to propose Super NPU, the optimized SFQ NPU architecture. In this talk, we focus on these two topics due to the limited presentation time. I will talk about the modeling and simulation framework with the validation. 
First, let me introduce the baseline architecture of SFQ MPU briefly. Please refer to our paper for detail. We choose 2D systolic array as our on-chip network structure. In the buffer design, we use shift register based memory, which is the most practical SFQ on chip memory technology. We also design data alignment unit for input feature map buffer. The data alignment unit converts convolutional operations to matrix multiplications. In the processing element design, we apply weight stationary P design. This is the overview of our SFQ MPU simulation framework. This framework consists of SFQ MPU model and SFQ MPU simulator. SFQ MPU model consists of three sub models. First, gate model predicts the timing, power, area information of SFQ logic gates. Next, microarchitecture model predicts the frequency, power, and area of the microarchitecture unit, such as PE buffer, based on the gate model output. Finally, architecture model estimates the frequency, static power, and area of target MPU design. Based on the output of SFQ MPU model, SFQ MPU simulator estimates the performance and the total power consumption, including cooling costs. We validate microarchitecture and architecture model with the post layer design and fabricate chip in the left figures. Validation setup showed the chip measurement environment and we use liquid helium bath for cooling chip. Because the gate model is based on the validated Josephson circuit simulator, JSIM, we focus on microarchitecture and architecture model validation. The right figure showed the validation result in terms of frequency, power consumption, and area. Therefore, we conclude that our microarchitecture and the architecture model accurately predict the frequency, power, and area. Next, I will explain our proposal architecture, Super MPU. Similar to other devices, SFQ-based MPU have a large design space that cannot be easily explored even with the modeling tool. Therefore, we start from our baseline design and identify the major performance bottlenecks. We conduct performance analysis by running following six CNN workloads with our simulation framework. In this experiment, we start from baseline following TPU architecture specification because the baseline has a similar hardware structure with the TPU, such as weight stationary data flow and systolic array network. In addition, the area of the baseline might be comparable to the TPU core if the SFQ circuits are assumed to be scaled to the 28 nanometers, same as the TPU. We also assume memory bandwidth following to the TPU V2 design. To show the bottleneck clearly, I will use Lufrine model. X axis shows the computation intensity and Y axis shows the performance in log scale. Intersection with the Y axis corresponds to the memory bandwidth. This plot showed the baseline performance. The black and red broken line showed the baseline and ideal computation intensity, respectively. The results indicate two major bottlenecks, large memory and computation speed gap, and low pipeline utilization. The performance of the baseline is limited by the memory bandwidth, even with the ideal computation intensity. Besides, the performance is not reaching to roof line, and it implies low pipeline utilization due to the deep pipeline structure. To resolve the bottlenecks, first, we have to increase computation intensity by fully utilizing on-chip buffers and reduce the number of excess PEs. And we have to fill deep pipeline with enough operation to hide the overhead of feeding and draining pipeline. Based on the bottleneck analysis, we optimize architecture in three ways. First, in the buffer design, we divide a long shift register to several short shift registers to reduce huge data movement overhead. In the baseline design, it takes huge cycle to propagate partial sum from output buffer to partial sum buffer. 
On the other hand, the divided buffer can reduce the data movement overhead. In addition, partial sum and output buffer can be integrated as one buffer. Therefore, buffer division can significantly reduce the data movement overhead in shift register memory. Next, we rebalance hardware resource. Specifically, we reduce too much PEs and increase the buffer capacity. Therefore, MPU can hold much more data simultaneously and in increase the compilation intensity. Finally, we increase the number of registers in PE. In the baseline design, if the input buffer does not have enough data, pipeline cannot be filled with the MAC operation because PE can only hold the one weight pixel. On the other hand, if each PE has several registers, the pipeline can be filled with operations even with the small number of inputs. Therefore, multiple registers in PE can fill the pipeline and hide the filling and draining overheads. We propose Super MPU, the optimized SFQ MPU architecture, which applies the three following optimizations. The right figure shows the overview of Super MPU. The number of parts are optimized part from baseline design. With the three optimizations, although the peak performance degrades from baseline design, Super MPU achieves 52 times higher performance thanks to these optimizations. Next, I will evaluate our Super MPU. We evaluate the performance and power efficiency of Super MPU and TPU. The architecture specifications are shown in the right table. In the performance evaluation, we assume the current available 1 micrometer neobium technology to show the SFQ potential conservatively. Besides, we extract TPU performance by ScaleShim, which is the cycle accurate simulator for systolic array CNN accelerator. In the power efficiency evaluation, we also assume energy efficiency SFQ logic technology called ERSFQ technology. On the other hand, we assume 40 watts as a TPU power. We use six following CNN workloads. The under table showed the batch size of each design. The batch size is the maximum value which can be held by a given on-chip buffer capacity without additional off-chip memory access. First, let me show the performance results. Y-axis shows the speed up compared to TPU. Thanks to the high potential of SFQ technology and SFQ friendly optimizations, Super MPU can achieve 23 times higher performance in average. In MobileNet, Super MPU improved its performance more than 40 times. Next, let me show the power efficiency evaluation. X axis shows the power efficiency normalized to the TP value. Without the cooling cost for 4 Kelvin, Super MPU achieves 419 times higher power efficiency. Even with the cooling cost, Super MPU can improve 1.2 times higher power efficiency. Let me summarize my talk. First, we designed the baseline architecture of SFQ MPU by circuit level analysis. Next, we developed SFQ MPU simulation framework. This is the first architecture modeling tool for SFQ circuit. Third, we propose optimized MPU architecture, Super MPU, based on the bottleneck analysis. Finally, we showed the high potential of Super MPU even with the immature 1 micrometer process technology. Compared to CMOS MPU, Super MPU improved the performance of 23 times on average. Besides, Super MPU achieves 419 times and 1.2 times higher power efficiency without and with cooling cost, respectively. Moreover, much more performance improvement can be expected with the advancement of device technology. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you for your listening.